it comes to remakes, I'm not usually a fan. However, Stephen King novels have notoriously been pretty good about remakes or modern adaptations. Carrie was even pretty decent, but the original was so good, it kind of overshadowed what they did. Same with Children of the Corn. But the latest remake of a film based on a Stephen King novel is Salem's Lot. They did a sorta, kinda remake in season 2 of Castle Rock, but it was very, very different from the actual story, and it didn't actually involve any vampires. This movie, however, was pretty damn good, and I enjoyed the majority of it. This has been Marks on Movies, and today we're talking about the 2024 remake of Stephen King's Salem's Lot before Halloween. Now, let's get into it. For those wanting to avoid any spoilers, you might be on the wrong video, because you're about to get a ton of them. But here's your warning anyway. Spoilers. Ben Mears returns to his hometown, Jerusalem's Lot, or Salem's Lot, to write a book, and soon sparks a romance with Susan Norton. She's a local girl dreaming of escaping her small-town life and controlling mother. You know, that old chestnut. Meanwhile, strange happenings unfold when a creepy European named Straker moves into the ominous Marston house with a coffin delivered for his master, Kurt Barlow, who's actually a vampire that kinda looks like Nosferatu. I'm getting scaredy farts. As the town's residents, including local boys Ralphie and Danny, start disappearing or turning into vampires, chaos erupts and Ben is unfairly blamed. You know, as you do. But when Ben teams up with high school student Mark Petrie, teacher Matt Burke, and Dr. Cody, they realize they're up against a full-scale vampire invasion. As the gang investigates, they discover that Barlow and Straker are turning the townspeople into bloodthirsty vampires. <laughs> Boy. Here we go. Things spiral out of control when Mark's friend is kidnapped, Barlow bites Matt, and even Susan gets turned into a vampire, with her mother becoming a servant to Barlow after Mark escapes from Straker and takes him out with a golf club. Ben and his team fight to stop the vampiric plague, but the town quickly becomes overrun. Amid rabies shots and makeshift weapons, they desperately battle the undead, but soon their numbers dwindle as more residents are turned into vampires, leaving only small groups of visitors. In a final showdown, Ben and Mark discover the vampires are hiding at a drive-in movie theater using car trunks as coffins. As they prepare to kill the turned Susan, Dr. Cody is shot by Susan's mother, the sun starts to set, and vampires swarm the theater. Mark destroys the screen, exposing the vampires to sunlight, while Ben stakes Barlow, ending the nightmare. With the town's residents wiped out by the vampiric onslaught, Ben and Mark drive off, leaving the cursed town behind, hoping to escape the horrors they've endured. Play me off, Johnny! Now, let's get into my breakdown. The casting, costumes, and setting back in the 1970s, in my opinion, hit this one out of the park. There wasn't a weak performance in the bunch. I feel like Lewis Pullman is a rising star in Hollywood, and while I feel like the 80s has been played out at this point, going back to the 70s still has gold to mine for Hollywood. The actual story and pacing was good. I will say, I didn't like the fact that we were given pretty much zero information about Straker and Barlow. By the way, everyone kept mentioning how they were European. We can make assumptions that they came from Transylvania, and this was a Dracula or Nosferatu-type situation, and Straker was basically Renfield. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I wanted a bit of backstory on them both. We got nothing. Straker shows up in 1970s Maine, dressed like he's straight out of the Victorian era. He opens up an antique shop out of nowhere after buying the creepiest house in town, because I guess creepy people are attracted to creepy houses? Who knows? But who is Straker? Where is he from? How did he meet Barlow? Who the hell is Barlow? Did they actually meet because Barlow took over Straker's town, like he tried to take over Salem's lot, and he left Straker alive to be his servant? I've got a lot of questions I need answers to. I don't know. I was also a bit disappointed that literally everyone died, and there wasn't a way to stake Barlow and have the others snap out of it. But hey, whatever. This is a Stephen King story after all. I will say that the last shot is Ben and Mark driving away while Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot plays, and my mind was just wandering. If I were them, I'd literally go through town setting everything on fire after packing up my own stuff, leave nothing standing, burn that town to the ground. Otherwise, you're gonna have authorities showing up, seeing a bunch of dead bodies strewn across an empty town, and they're gonna have some questions. Them questions may come back to you and Mark. Uh -oh. 
and you're gonna have some splaining to do. Not sure the entire town was wiped out by a European vampire would exactly fly with the FBI. Then again, they may cover up the whole thing and pretend Salem's Lot never existed. You know, kind of like they were gonna do with Springfield in the Simpsons movie. Just hide the truth. Again, who knows? But now what's gonna happen to Ben and Mark? I know I'm thinking too much about it, but seriously, this kid is not Ben's kid. Ben has no records for Mark. I know things are a little easier to fudge back in the 1970s, but not that easy. I don't know, this just seems like a big issue that's gonna plague them. It's not interesting enough to dedicate a film to, however, so we'll never know. Either way, I did not come at this from the perspective of someone who has read the book or even watched the original movie. Besides season two of Castle Rock, this is my first exposure to Salem's Lot. From that perspective, I really enjoyed this movie. When Barlow appears behind Mark's mom in their kitchen, that jump scare really got my wife to the point of her screaming out loud. God, I go to church every goddamn Sunday. You gonna bring the demons out of me? She's naturally jumpy anyway. It wasn't real deep. It was fun. It was suspenseful. It was a great watch for spooky season. So I'd recommend it. Comment with your thoughts on all of this. Have you seen the new Salem's Lot yet? Are you planning to? Did you read the book or watch the original film? I want to know how you feel this one compares to either the book or the original film. Let me know down in the comment section. Please share this video around to everyone you know, and don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the little bell to be notified every time we post brand new content. This has been Marks on Movies, and we'll see you next time.